everybody dr rick coming at you straight from the h uh where we are still trying to gather ourselves from a pretty crazy thunderstorm uh over the weekend where we lost power some people are still without power days later uh but here we are look today is monday that means that we are about to dive into another melanated manly mandate monday uh but this is going to be a special episode this is going to be an episode that is going to focus on uh the current roar on the internet which is the diddy cassie vi video um and the fallout from that and then the subsequent apology but since we're talking about masculinity we're talking about black manhood I want to break it down and I want to go over a number of different points. So this is going to be a little more detailed than usual. And I hope you ride with me because we're going to talk about some things. We're going to talk about this whole thing. And I'm going to give it to you from the perspective of what we need to be saying in our men, what we need to be executing as men. One of the reasons I am not a fan of making celebrities our models for manhood, our models for leadership, our models for execution. Uh, they are good at being successful at what they are, but a lot of times they lack the capacity to be a representation of what we truly need to see and have our children emulate. And that's why we've got to be responsible for presenting the right image and being able to filter and manage and contextualize what they see in these people. In the right context, these people may be very well uh, worthy of some celebration or very well worthy of, uh, in, you know, being um, a form of inspiration in their fields, but they may not be good people that you want to be the establishment of character and behavior and it's our responsibility to deal with that but let's get with this the video uh the first thing i want to do is talk about what the video did initially and in the court get all the emotion out of it get all of whose side you're going to be on and why you're on that side and all that. We're going to touch all that. But let's talk about the basis of the video. And the thing that you have to use to frame how you're going to have any conversation here is because everything at the end of the day is about character. It's about the uh, character and the execution of character and the strength of that uh, and, and the ability to execute character, which is integrity. See, character by itself simply tells you what the value system is. The integrity is the strength that allows you to stand in your character despite what you may be going through or dealing with character. And integrity in the entire framing is not about puff perfect behavior or perfect decision making or perfect anything nobody has that people are going to make bad decisions people are going to make poor choices is it a pattern is it a reflection of your uh lack of a willingness to align yourself with what you say you truly believe or is it you know an a, a, a honest mistake an honest misstep or un and, and all of that is fine i'm about giving people the latitude to be human what i am not about is watching you have a pattern of behavior that is detrimental detrimental and non-conducive to the things that i um espouse and push and, and 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 believe so the first thing the video does for me is it reveals that here is a man who for years denied that that happened. I'm talking about that particular thing. Not all the other things that people are sitting up talking about this dude did. We're going to get to that in a minute. But this particular thing right here that he sit up and swore up and down. Watch this young lady get drugged up and down, in and out, ridiculed, made to look like she was bitter and everything else all the while it happened. And he sit up and said look you know what uh it didn't happen she's just this she's just that and everybody that's diddy that's diddy she just this that's diddy we have i said this before when i talked about this in the beginning we have a very poor relationship with money so anytime we see people with it we automatically ascribe to them a latitude and a pass and a bunch of other things that other people wouldn't get 
It's a bunch of people, black men, which really truly troubles me, black men who are sitting up trying to give this guy a pass, knowing damn well if Ray Ray would have did what Diddy did to that girl in that video, if Ray Ray would do that to their daughter, Ray Ray would have two in the dome. But that's Diddy. We have a poor relationship with money, celebrity, and fame. It is how we experience power because most of us don't believe we have the capacity to create any form of power and experience any form of elevated success on our own. So we find the few that we see that are doing it. Forget the fact that there are a bunch of people that aren't celebrities, that aren't famous, that are living their best lives, that look just like us, but because they are not... <clears throat> they're not in the public eye we don't know they're there and so we 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 set our gaze on these people who are up there and some of them are great people some of them are not but the bottom line is they are a microcosm of a much bigger reality and they don't express the entire panoramic experience of who we are as a people and what we should be doing and often, a lot of times, and I'm not saying every time, but a lot of times they are where they are because of what they did to other people. And we need to be, we need to be willing to be honest about that. But here we are, this guy sits up and says it doesn't happen. This girl gets drugged and everything like that. Okay, that's the first part of this is immediately you are exposed as a liar. And people have suffered because of that lie. Now it's out, and now we're trying to do, you know, we, we, we're doing uh, spinning. We're going to spin the story. We're going to do some PR. Uh, we're going to do what, what is commonly done when people in uh, high-profile uh, situations get caught in something that does not bode well for their brand or for their uh aspirations and affiliations and everything and everyone involved you have to start con reframing and contextualize recontextualizing the situation to try to put it in as as positive of a light as possible it's real hard if you're going to be honest with yourself if you're going to put out of your mind that this is a guy who has achieved billionaire status in his industry um and some other things and um, and, 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 and all of that, and you're going to say, okay, this is a man, this is a woman, this is what happened. You have to say that's unacceptable. And if you are a man that in any way sits up and thinks that's acceptable under any circumstance, the only way to me that violence towards a woman is acceptable is when she is capable of committing violence towards you that could harm you. In other words, if she's coming at me with a knife, I got a right to defend myself to the level of ensuring that I'm not harmed or anyone that I care for is harmed. If she's got a gun, I got a right to fire. And I don't have to wait for her to fire. I'm going to tell you right now, if you raise a gun at me, you have equaled yourself to me. And I got a right to return or to initiate uh, fire, depending on what I see and I ascertain. But simply because you won't do what I say, simply because you talking, uh, you know, fly or you flip or you, 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 whatever, whatever, you know, or are you in my face? I get it from the sense of how we are as men. We're taught early on, somebody put their hands on you, handle your business. And there's a reason for that. You do. You need to make sure that nobody ever gets comfortable with putting their hands on you. But you also have to understand what your number one responsibility is, is to protect your strength and your size and your natural aggression is for a reason. It's divinely it is divinely inked into your DNA. That's why you get bigger. That's why you get stronger. That's why you have a natural aggression associated with the rise in your testosterone. It's because you're meant to stand up and actually put in work when you have to to make sure not only you are safe, but all the people who can't defend themselves are safe. And when you're in the presence of a female, she cannot defend herself against you. And you have to be willing to sit up and say there's a problem when the second leading cause of death for female, black females 
between 15 and 44 is intimate partner violence. That's a problem. This isn't giving black women a pass who are uh, aggressive and violent because there are black women who are aggressive and violent. There are women who are dangerous. Black women who are dangerous. And that needs to be dealt with and they need to be accountable. But we can't use what they're doing to justify what he did. And I'm going to get to all the other victim blaming later on. But that's the first thing. Stop blaming someone for what you saw. What you saw is what you saw. There's no way around it. Basically, he had already hit. Let me give you the context on it. They had went out. He got drunk and had hit her out in public. Gave her a black eye. That's why. And so what happens is they got back to the room. She waited for him to fall asleep. And she tried to leave while he was asleep. Thus why he is running out of the room with a towel on. Uh, you can make a whole bunch of other inferences. I mean, a whole bunch of um, other um, speculations on what happened between then and there uh, with him only having a towel on. But the bottom line is he comes running out and everything you see happens after that. Um, we need to be able to sit up and say as men, it's unacceptable. We can have the discussions about all the things that are going on within the gender war, all the ways we feel disrespected. And we can have that and we can have that honest conversation. But at the core of it, we must first have a conversation about the responsibility we have as innately and divine as anything else. We are, post we are supposed to be protectors before we are providers. And that is important. Why? Because becoming a provider at whatever level you become a provider to the level of the average man of being able to cover the basic expenses to the, the type of man like Diddy that can take you and fly you around the world and do all those other things that most people will never experience. It does not eliminate the rule of the first rule of order. Protect. It does not. You, anybody justifying it is off kill. Anybody coming up with a reason to justify it is off kill. This isn't to say that Cassie is perfect. This isn't to say that any woman that is being abused is perfect. You're not supposed to have to be perfect to be safe. That's the first thing. We've got to get out of that mindset. We literally have gotten to a point as men where we, instead of looking to stand up and be what we're supposed to do, we look for reasons not to. That's an excuse. That's And being reared by my great-grandfather, a man who grew up uh, the son of a sharecropper, having to work in the field at seven years old, having to learn how to provide for a family without an education, and did it. The, the things that I was taught, you don't make excuses. I couldn't come to him and say, well, th they are doing it. I don't give a damn about what they're doing. I can't come to him and say, well, this person did. What were you supposed to do? Do what you're supposed to do. Then we can deal with what they didn't do or what they did do. But if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you don't have a complaint. We got to get better than that. Then everybody's talking about, you know, Cassie got what she deserved because she left Ryan Leslie to go with Diddy uh, when Ryan Leslie was with her first and was her manager and her promoter and a producer and all this stuff. And she ended up with Diddy and all this stuff like this. Again, I know what has been said. I know a lot of the story. Uh, too much to get into in this one particular thing because I'm covering so much. Uh, and I'm not saying that she's this perfect person that made all these things. What I am simply saying here is this. Keep your damn hands to yourself. And make, we've gotten to a point now where our women don't feel safe in our presence. This is literally a truth. This isn't me over exaggerating. This is a real situation where we are really at a point where our women are supposed to feel safest. They feel most at, uh, most un, uh, at, un, at they're un, un at ease. And that's a problem. And we should be aware of it. And it should bother us. We actually have gotten to a point where we treat our women as enemies. And don't get me wrong, they handling us too the same way. And ladies, that's a problem. But what I want to focus on, this is about masculinity. And this is about leadership. So you don't get to be the leader pointing fingers. That's not how leadership works. 
the buck stops with you. I remember growing up in the home and my grandmother explaining to me, because I went to her, why is it everything is deferred to him? And it's not always, she pretty much ran the house. So it wasn't everything always deferred to him. But at the end of the day, he had the final decision. She said, point blank, he's the man, he's the leader. If something happens wrong in this house, nobody's going to look at me. They're going to look at him. Even if I did it, if the finances fall apart, even if I make more, uh, he makes more money and I make little and the finances fall apart, it's going to focus on him. Um, whatever goes on, it's going to focus on him. And if it's going to focus on him, he should have the final say so. And I said, so, and she followed up with this. The reason I can trust him is not because he's perfect, not because he's always made the right choice, but because even when he's wrong, he will fix it. That's all I can ever ask is when you get it wrong, fix it. And he always has. And she, she put that on my mind. And I, 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 I later, maybe a few years down the line, I had a talk with him as he took 100% responsibility of my, my uh, rearing after eight years old. Everything came through him. And he sit up and he sit up and he told me when I asked him, he sit up and said, hey, look, if I'm going to get blamed for it, I'm damn sure going to make the choice. He says, if I'm going to carry the burden of, uh, uh, of the responsibility of whatever happens in this house, then I'm going to have input, the final input on what happens in the house. I'm not bigger or better than your mom. I'm just the person that is responsible for this house. And even that now is in dispute because everybody's trying to make an alignment with a new idea and not understanding you can't have a democracy with two people. Somebody has to be able to make a choice when it matters and somebody's got to be the person that's trusted. That's why who you're with and why you're with them is so damn important. But I could go on and on about that. And we have plenty of times on all these other Mondays to get to a lot of this stuff. But I want to get to it. Let's just talk about some stuff because see, I, I'm about as 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 a behavioral human behavioral expert. Um I'm about patterns. I pay attention to patterns. Anybody can make a mistake. Anybody can go in a wrong direction, but everybody has patterns and nobody is perfect. So, you know, what I'm looking at is what do your negative patterns tell me about you? Because everybody has them. Everybody has positive patterns and negative patterns. The whole, the whole thing is you want the things that you do positively to be the stronger suit and the negative things to be the smaller suit or the least significant suit so that they can be covered by the negative and then you can work on them or be influenced by them. But you, you, you're you basically looking at good and good and evil for lack of a better term from the perspective of what is the stronger suit. Your patterns of uh, benevolence and good or your patterns of evil and treachery or darkness and deceit or whatever it is and so you have to be honest with yourself and say what is prevailing in my life and a lot of people aren't even willing to do that now people we are in uh a pretty much an antinomianistic state and that just simply means everybody's doing what they want to do nobody is considering the greater uh scheme the greater uh, responsibility of community. We are social creatures. We're meant to collaborate. We're meant to operate together. And when we don't, when we sink back into our selfish ways, we tend to do what we want to do and it tends to negatively impact other people and the community suffers. What we look at is we have all these things that we brag about. Technology is off the chain. People have things that they've never had in, uh, in previous generations. Uh, education, uh, we have more and more of us achieving things in education and, and all of this stuff, and yet our communities are imploding. Um, our families are imploding. Our health is declining. All of these different things that I have written on and talked about in depth is taking place. Matter of fact, my next book coming out on June 1st is Healed and Hold. And we're not talking about simple nutrition and fitness and all that. We delve in it, but the biggest part of it is the mental stresses and the mental environment and the spiritual elements and components of true healing. Healing yourself because you're in the right environment. We're in a toxic ass environment, compiling things, taking trips,
getting all the design of fashion and all that, and yet we look around us and everything's crumbling because we've lost sight of who we're supposed to be and who we are. And so we get off into that. But I want to look at the patterns right now. Let's just look, for instance, at how many people have died that's close to this guy. Death's associated with Daddy. And you can sit up and say, well, that had this and do that. We're going to start with Pac. Pac always believed that the first time he got shot was it had something to do with Puffy and Biggie. Well, they denied it and he just would not let it go. And this ultimately started the East Coast, West Coast beef, even though Pac is originally from New York. He's now with Death Row. He's now over there with Digital Underground. He's he's doing his thing, right? But he keeps pushing this. He keeps telling us, this dude, this dude. He even tried to warn Biggie about Diddy. It was Puffy, Dad, Puff, Puffy, Puff Daddy, whatever back then. He was trying to warn him. He ended up dead. Next person to end up dead is Big. Now, my question is immediately when I first saw about it is, why is Big in a different SUV than Puff? Why isn't it uh, bulletproofed, especially when we're roughly, what, seven months off of Pac being killed and you're in Pac's house, basically? Why is it that you think you can just roll like that? And why aren't you in the truck with your ace, your boy, your best friend, your dude? Why? Well, we move on. Let's just call it what it is. Kim Porter, 2018. His ex-wife, mother of his children, matter of fact, those beautiful baby girls, I think, are graduating this year. They just had their prom, I think, this past weekend, while this other stuff is going on about the crap that their pops did. Um, those babies, you know, hopefully they get the right uh, support they need. But anyway, and there are the other kids, too. Uh, but this is uh, Kim Porter who supposedly died in her 40s from um, pneumonia with no underlying conditions. Uh, while it's possible, it's very, very suspicious and it can be emulated. Um, then there's Shakur Stewart, who happened to be dating Kim Porter after she divorced Diddy. Uh, there is uh, Dr. Frank Ryan, who was a surgeon that operated on Cassie's breast gate performed uh, Cassie's breast augmentation that Diddy didn't like and demanded that they be removed one week after having them done and some things came about that he suspiciously went off a cliff in Los Angeles um, Black Rob Craig Mack we can talk about those all day the, the, the guy who supposedly was shot in a uh, in a restroom at one of the studios in Los Angeles that um, the cover a cover up happened um you can look that one up and you know we can go on you know you can look at um uh, i'll be sure who is uh kim porter's uh a bar friend before diddy and uh the f true biological father of the oldest kid that diddy uh diddy claimed um he ended up suspiciously in a coma that he's still recovering from it. Matter of fact, he's moved here to H-Town. Uh, I'm assuming to be near the medical center, uh, one of the best medical centers in the world. But uh, he's here. And you can go on and on of things that just seem to happen around this dude. You know, from uh, the shootout at the club that Shine did almost 10 years for her to find out that Diddy was the one that actually fired the shots. I mean, and, and again, one thing, okay. Two things, okay. But what happened is we get these things isolated and you get this big media push, this big PR response, and it's everybody's after Diddy. At some point, you got to start saying, man, Diddy doing something. Diddy's doing something. And now don't get me wrong. Uh, I want to be very clear. I think that Diddy did the wrong thing to Rumpel. I think when he sued the... Uh, what is it? The uh, tequila company. I'm, I'm, I'm think it's tequila. When he sued them, and, and and I think it was one other person he sued. He's playing major ball now, and he pissed off the wrong people, and they unleashed the gates. 
You're going to see that with gatekeepers. You see it in politics all the time. The people that the black community love to celebrate because they get up there and they do exactly what black people do. They check people. We got one coming now with the whole thing that's going on with, with the uh, beach blonde, bat, bill, whatever thing. Watch what happens, though. You know, it's all good. We celebrate that. That's all cute, but that absolutely does nothing for us. But we do that. What happens? Mo Lori Mos uh not Lori uh, Mosby, but what's her first name? Uh, Mosby, the DA from that. She's getting ready to go to prison. Remember when she was the big thing? Kim Gardner, uh, Corey uh, Bush. All, all these people that we celebrate that they put up there and then that when they get ready to destroy them, they just destroy them and you look up and their careers are gone. A lot of them end up in jail and prosecuted. And they, that's not, uh, it's a few more. Uh, what's the other one that everybody was on? Fanny Willis. She's in a bind now because that's how they build and destroy. They don't give you a platform without having a way of taking you off of it. I have in the past five years received a minimum of 10 offers to change my content that it would number one blow up my viewership if i took a different route and they give you the route they want you to take and it will blow up my viewership it would increase my income it would open up other doors to do other things but it will come at the cost of me selling out my people not directly i wouldn't be doing anything directly but i wouldn't be giving them the truth I would be misleading them. I would be watering down the truth. I would get what I want, but my people would suffer. And this and this isn't a one-time thing. This thing happens all. They look at you and they think, that voice right there, the way he does this or the way she does that, oh, they'll bite that. They'll eat that. And then they come to you because they're looking at you going like, all you got is this many followers. All you got is that. Let me do this. And I'm telling you, that's happened in just the last five years, about 10 times. But if I go all the way back to when I first got on social media, the bum rush was off the chain. The bottom line is I've lost clients that I've had that I got on my own because I won't tame my voice when it comes to my people. That's how serious I am. See, people can talk. But are you delivering? Are you what? What skin are you putting in the game? And no, I'm not perfect. No, I don't have all the answers. No, I ain't. That, I'm none of that. But I'm a person every day. You can wake up and you're gonna see me where I'm at. I'm on my square. I'm consistent. You check my messages. Check my content. Thousands upon thousands of videos. Thousands upon thousands of articles. Over a thousand scholarly articles. Over 28 books. I, I, I'm giving you all of me. And I'm doing it unapologetically from the position of a black man. And it comes at a cost. So when I see cats moving, I know, I know, hey, you're doing your thing. And as long as their thing isn't something that I can look at and say is hurting our people. When I look at black men beating on black women, whether I don't know if Cassie's black or not. But the whole idea is he represents black manhood. Now, from what I understand, she definitely has some African... Uh, or Afro uh, ties, but Kim Porter was black. So, and a bunch of other people. Uh, but here's my thing. I want to get past this and get to the next thing. So we talked about that. Now, let's talk about the apology. I'm not going to spend a whole time on it. He comes on, he makes his apologies. A couple of things that stand out immediately. Stand out immediately with me is he says that he was disgusted when it happened and he's still disgusted now but he wasn't disgusted when it happened enough to admit that it happened and accept responsibility in a way that that young lady didn't get drugged and ridiculed and made to look like she was lying when the whole time she was telling the truth it wasn't disgusting enough to do that, but it's disgusting now that it has come out. The other thing is he never mentions her name. Whenever you are looking at a narcissist and they're pushed into a corner where they have to do something they don't want to do, look at what it focuses on. He focuses on him. He's sorry that it happened. He's sorry the behavior is disgusting, but he never acknowledges the person he hurt. 
that's because deep down he can't because deep down in size he doesn't feel like he did anything wrong he's just being forced to do something in order to keep what he wants or try to protect as much as he possibly can the thing is when i'm wrong i say i'm wrong i don't i don't offer excuses look this is what happened i did it i'm sorry and if it's somebody specifically, I'm going to apologize to them specifically. And if I have to make a public statement, I'm going to make sure that the apology is still to them. It's not about me and how I felt and what I was going through and the pressure that I had to deal with and all the things that come with it. It's about you did something you shouldn't do. Sit up and acknowledge it and then go on. Um... My thing is this guy has consistently presented a certain type of behavior. How many people have uh, get uh how many people have tried to warn us? Pop, 50 Cent, Lil Wayne, Aubrey O'Day, uh Jay Farrell, Kanye, Cat Williams. Uh, and the list goes on and everybody's crazy, everybody hating, everybody jealous and, and all that. At some point in time, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. If the system sees you as a threat, they will do everything they can to erase you and your name will become trash, whether it's trash or not. Uh, the problem is with that is what you see in that video is a doctor. That's a representation of who he is. Now, when they can destroy you with stuff you actually did, it's actually not being victimized. It's roost. I mean, chickens coming home to roost. And we have to be willing to sit up and say, hey, look, like you can you can look at all these different things. You can sit up and say, hey, man, if this happens, if that happens, I'm about I'm about second chances. God knows I've needed them. And probably we will need some more. So I'm about second chances. I'm not about burying somebody just to bury them. But I'm trying to say some people aren't really actually looking for second chances. They're looking for you to stop holding them accountable so they can go on and do what they're going to do. Second ch Chances are given for change. Chances are saying, hey, look, this is what you're doing. We're going we're gonna to hold you accountable, but here's, here's another chance to get it right. That's what chances are for, to get it right. Not to keep doing what you're doing and just try to be better at not getting caught. That's why the recidivism rate is so high. You get released, it's another chance. But you either take the chance to say, I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going back there again. Or you get upset and say, man, well, I know not to do this time. I know, I know not to do that. So, And so you try to figure it out. And eventually you're going to end up, end up back. That is just the way it works. So my thing is, why is it any different for him? It's not. And eventually when you piss off the people who have been keeping you covered, it comes at a price. And Diddy has been playing games with some pretty heavy hitters. One of the most powerful people in Hollywood. One. And so and then you messing with uh I forget the name of the tequila distributor. But it's a big, big money deal and them people are involved with it. And you 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 know better. Uh but anyway, that's that. Finally. And I'm done. Finally, the biggest thing that hits me when I look at this whole situation is the response. The justification, the victim blaming, no accountability. Um, there's, there's literally the blood of this black gender war spilling out into the streets of our community um, with callous, vitriol, disregard pure hatred and we can't rise like that we can sit sit up and point fingers all day we can sit up and blame each other for what's going wrong uh, but what I can tell you is leaders don't point fingers leaders make moves leaders take action leaders take responsibility leaders stand up and that is that simple. 
we can either sit up and go, you know, and I and and, and I understand a lot of brothers are defensive because they're tired of being blamed, and they they've been through their own things. I get it. I know. I, I I'm not sitting over here pretending like I haven't gotten hit or hurt uh, by a female. What I'm trying to get you to understand is I refuse to let that be the force that guides my movement because I'm going to be better when I'm centered. I'm going to be better when I'm able to love, especially when I've got eight daughters. One of which has been hitting me. I'm going to have to get off in a minute and take this. I've got babies. Well, they're not babies. My babies are grown all except from the youngest one who is 10 going on 40. But all the rest of them are grown. Yeah, that was the one that just came uh, late in life. But and that's my little road, roadie. But look, seriously, it's easy to sit up and point fingers and point blame. Again, coming to you as an imperfect man that doesn't have all the answers. I'm not sitting up and saying, uh, dump everything out when I'm, throw out the baby with the bathwater, I guess is the uh, uh, cliche or whatever. My, my thing is this, if we don't start living up to a certain standard, if we don't start sitting up and having a standard of manhood that says I'm prepared to lead, which means I'm prepared to hold the responsibility of not just myself, but my house and my community and ultimately my race, then we cannot be ever in a position to truly obtain power. I mean, power that allows us to function autonomously uh, without having to seek help from people who benefit from our demise. That is where I'm going to stand on this thing. It was foul. And the thing is, there's just this list, long list of foul behavior. And at some point, you don't escape the law of reciprocity. The, you, the universal law of reciprocity cannot be escaped. You call it sowing, reaping, uh, whatever you want to call it. You can call it karma. You can call it whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, you get what you put out, good and bad. And just because you don't see a person get it don't mean they didn't get it. And that's another thing. A lot of us sitting around waiting on somebody that hurt us 20 years ago to get theirs, and they probably got it and gone because you, you that's not your job to make sure they get it. Your job is to make sure you heal. Your job is to make sure you get better. Your job is to make sure that it doesn't happen again because you're on your P's and Q's. You're on your game. That uh, what, waiting on somebody, waiting on somebody else to get something negative because of what they did to you is actually a, a, a form of bitterness. It's the equivalent of taking poison, hoping they die. We've got a lot to grow up in, and I'm hoping that some of you guys will actually join in and see, come see me on the first when I do this Healed and Whole Symposium online. Uh, I'll put the link in the box, but I'm hoping that you'll come join me in that. But whatever you do, man, uh, look, we got more work to do. And uh, again, for the brothers who joined us on the third Thursday of this month for Brothers Unfiltered, where the black men come together in a sacred space to really encourage one another, to share, to unload, and to uh, move without judgment. We had another great one. We'll see you again on the third th uh, Thursday of June. But hey, it's time to make something happen. It's time to do something differently. And I really and truly hope uh, that the information and the things that I'm sharing bring us to light. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Yeah. Yeah. They said I should give it up. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage 
uh, initiative and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. I'm free to be who I am.